This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. Just before getting to this, what even is a boutique pedal? I think the idea of a boutique pedal used to be things that are made in kind of limited quantities, um, limited production runs, which is sort of an arbitrary thing, which I guess is used to, to help something more attractive. Um, but the idea was they were supposed to be not using mass production kind of techniques. Um, maybe there'd be more hand-built elements to them than a mass-produced pedal, um, and maybe they're more innovative. These are the kind of words that you see about these sorts of pedals, but I think over the years that has sort of been lifted as an idea, I feel like. But yeah, that is still what, what companies like Anderton's and Gear for Music, etc. say about these boutique pedals, that they're more innovative in some ways. Um, they are uh, not mass-produced, they might have limited runs, they might be more experimental. Um, if you look at some of the brands that they've got listed there, you've got Eventide and Strymon, you've got JHS and Keeley, uh, who I think both now are kind of more geared towards mass production, if anything. I, I don't... The idea that you could have a pedal within the best-selling pedals year after year after year and not be mass producing them, to me, seems questionable. Um, and in any case, I feel like if you're surface mounting boards and stuff like that, surely that is a mass production technique anyway. So boutique as a, as a, a name, a boutique pedal, does that even mean what it used to mean anymore? I, I think that's what I'm kind of figuring out. I actually found an article uh, on the Wampler site uh, in the blogs within there that Jason Wilding had written. Jason Wilding lives down the road. Um, and in that, he kind of said that the, the, the three main guys that I was thinking of that these don't really seem like boutique builders anymore. Actually, he says in there they don't like the word boutique for what they do either. So I thought that was kind of interesting in a way. So boutique, I think what we think of it as meaning, maybe even those builders might not call themselves boutique. So someone like Paul Cochran, maybe, maybe Analog Man, still think of those as boutique builders. Um, but the the guys that are using mass production techniques, maybe those guys at this point don't even like the word boutique for what they do. Kind of food for thought. 
And then what that does kind of lead the question is, well, who is still left making boutique pedals? There seems to be a few less people even than before because these guys have moved into mass production. You've got David Barber still making stuff, Paul Cochran, um, Tate Effects in the UK, I think Thorpe in the UK. There's not tons of them and they're not hugely well represented online, I don't think. I don't know if it's just me who's kind of thinking this, but are we seeing less of the sort of boutique pedal stuff happening and starting to see people, again, just looking at the boss? Well, this this is definitely happening for me, but there was a definite boom, wasn't there, where we'd see lots of smaller companies coming out with their versions of stuff or maybe their own unique pedals. Of course, most of them have said that they've got unique designs and then over the years you get people on like the gear page and that and the free stomp boxes and DIY folks kind of debunking that and showing us that actually a lot of the pedals out there are kind of tweaked versions of things that have been out since the 70s um, and not necessarily always improved. If you go on forums and look at like Tube Screamer stuff, you'll find people going on these long journeys trying to find the best Tube Screamer and inevitably a lot of them end up coming back to an Ibanez. I think actually the, the the bigger kind of boutique builders have kind of stopped being boutique anymore in some ways. Now that a lot of their stuff is kind of surface mount production, what did distinguish someone like Keeley or JHS or one of those bigger brands, Wampler, uh, etc. Now that they've become pretty big, is there that much difference really between a Boss SMT circuit and pedal? and something built in the US using presumably pretty similar machines, uh, if they are even built in the US. For sure, Keeley and JHS still do really well, but I don't really even think of those as boutique brands anymore. Those are kind of in the top selling pedals anyway, both of those. So those are as big in some ways as something like Boss or Proco, probably. Do you know what I mean? But anyway, I think it's worth investigating some of the original circuits because um, you know, whether it's a hard clipping circuit like the Rat or a soft clipping circuit like the Tube Screamer that kind of followed the Boss OD1, which followed the, the hard clipping circuits. I think quite a lot of these pedals are actually pretty good in their original form. You know, an Ibanez TS9, an Ibanez TS808, uh, an Ibanez TS Mini even. The Boss stuff really does sound pretty good. Yes, you could buy a Keeley Super Fat Mod or a Keeley Muse Driver, but you know, if you hear Andy Timmons playing through a blues driver unmodded, to me, that sounds just as great. I, I think what it's shown me is that the blues driver circuit in itself was a great sounded circuit. Um, you know, rats, of course, there's lots of kind of more boutique versions of these around. But if you can get good tones out of the stock stuff, to me, that seems a little bit, I don't know, cooler. Something you buy off the shelf, something that you didn't have to spend loads and loads of money on and uh, I'm finding that even like this Royal Overdrive which might seem like an unattainable sort of tone I'm feeling like I could get close-ish with a rat. Am I missing the point? In terms of underrated drive pedals I think for me the rat is definitely one of these uh, two players that I'm sort of aware of that were known for using a rat We've got Graham Coxon obviously you know from the band Blur. So I think Graham actually went on that pedal show and showed his pedal board and stuff like that. And then the other player, Nuno Betancourt, I think Nuno's settings are, you know, basically taking the clipping circuit out and running as a boost. So here's my clean-ish tone. I'm going into the Dexter Matchless. Lightning clone. whole lot there is it let's be honest So 
quite a lot of boost it's given there. If we take that volume down. I think Schofield as well, not Philip, uh, John. But as you turn up the filter, we actually get a bit of high-end roll-off. And I believe this is actually what uh, Paul Cochran took for his Timmy circuit. So you can see it's really... Kind of getting towards fuzz territory there, but it actually has like a, a good feel to it too. But yeah, that's... Yeah, the filter there, so really making a big difference. One other pedal that I think is worthy of definitely, I've done a couple of videos on this recently, particular significance given that um, Keely have just brought out yet another version of the Blues Driver called the Muse Driver. Um, but, you know, all of the things that they basically say about that pedal the original kind of does it as well. So this one was sent over to me by Rick Leyland, my music tech teacher from school. Um, and...
So, you know, like they say about the Keely Muse driver, you crank this thing up, it again kind of gets that sort of level of fuzz type stuff going on. <laughs> works really nicely as a pretty transparent boost type thing. Really, there's probably as much innovation in these two pedals as you get in much of what's going on in the boutique world from what I can figure out. <laughs> Lovely stuff, inexpensive pedals. I don't know if you don't feel like you're getting ripped off with them either. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Are there any of the boutique pedals that you really think hit the spot for you that you wouldn't give up? Love to know your thoughts if you've got any or these two up there with them. I think there's been those Anderton shootouts and stuff where the blues driver in, in the blindfolded stuff tends to come out sounding really good if there's anything to that. Case in point that I, I want to just check for myself, it's the Royal Overdrive, of course, an incredibly expensive pedal, discontinued because he can continue to make them at the price that he was making them, because uh, it's got a lot of components in it. I don't think it's just a, a clone of like a Tube Screamer or anything. Um, however, let's listen. <laughs> Definitely darker. Feel like with a rat <laughs> and maybe a, a, an EQ or something like that, I could probably get in the ballpark of even that pedal, right? Uh, don't know. Do I have a point? Am I way wrong? 